Mission project. Uh, before we get to that, let's talk about the compli complicated problem of uh, flying right now. We are surrounded uh, at this point. We have a total of about 13 helicopters and about four Cessnas that are towing those advertising banners. Uh, we wouldn't mind if they went home, but we know they're going to be here as well. Let's show you a live picture outside the helicopter right now as we zoom out and show you what Elliott Bay looks like. You're not going to believe this picture when you see it. Look how many people have lined up on Elliott Bay to watch this implosion. Uh, let's call it a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand. Quite a few people out there. Moving over to the Kingdome, we can talk more about the specific implosion. And remember, every black band that you see on top of the dome is a site where these explosives will go off. The roof will be detonated first, then the columns on the side, all of it hopefully falling in on top of itself. That's what we were told as we were given the final tour of the Kingdome just a few days ago. Standing inside, it hardly looks like the dome anymore. The first two levels of seating are gone, pulverized into piles of concrete rubble that now cover the floor. Through holes in the roof, technicians continue to place the miles of orange detonating cord, connected to the thousands of dynamite charges loaded into every kingdom column and support. It's been a very confusing job uh, because literally each hole's got a different, you know, a different delays. In and all of them connected to this one lunchbox size detonator. A fire button powered by D cell batteries will bring the kingdom down. So we don't think there's going to be a major problem, but again, anything can happen. Demolition experts detailed what could and what is supposed to happen one last time. Neighboring buildings are covered with protective fabric to limit damage from dust and debris. Each of the explosives are also covered to contain cement projectiles. After this test explosion, technicians decided to reduce the blast power needed to sever each column. That should also limit flying debris. The explosives will be set off in two phases in a sequence to last between 12 and 20 seconds. Each rib in the roof and every support column will be severed. The sequence is designed to make the dome fall in on top of itself. Only the concrete supports will be severed. The metal rebar will stay connected to help pull the outside walls in and keep the debris from landing outside the footprint of the dome. In terms of potential damage to other buildings, the closest are about 60 feet across Occidental. The new construction is happening just 130 feet away, but the experts say in terms of demolition, that is a long distance, and they don't expect to have any problems with falling debris. The, the greatest byproduct, I think, of what's going to happen with the Kingdom implosion that would affect immediately adjacent properties would be the 68 million cubic feet of air underneath the dome. It's got to go someplace, doesn't it? That somewhere is out in all directions at a high velocity in the form of a massive dust cloud. Given the prevailing wind pattern for the Kingdom, the likely path of that cloud will be toward the northeast. Rain could help limit that cloud and dampen the sound of explosions, and fog is the only weather that could stop the blast. A, a heavy, low cloud will reflect the concussive force of the explosives. Making the concussion too powerful and breaking too many windows. Barring that, demolition experts promise a light and sound show like Seattle will never see again. And we're flattered that you care to come out and see us, and I hope that uh, you enjoy what happens on Sunday morning. Kevin Reese, Como 4 News. But of course, as we can see at this point, certainly no fog. This will go on as planned. Something else to mention very quickly is that uh, the ro rolling slowdowns have started. You're looking at uh, 4th Avenue and I-90 next to the Kingdom. It is now empty. Other slowdowns are happening as well. And it looks like everything in terms of the weather is a go at this point. A little crowded on Elliott Bay, certainly crowded up here in the air. But we will keep an eye on it and uh, give you the best vantage point from about 1,000 feet in Air 4. Reporting live, Kevin Reese, Como 4 News. Notice a few folks joining joining you up there, Kevin, as the skies begin to get kind of crowded. We've heard that there could be as many as 25 helicopters and maybe 10 fixed wing aircraft up there to get that perfect vantage point when the kingdom comes down. Everything does seem to be going right on schedule here on a beautiful Sunday morning in Seattle. Two minutes before the implosion, we're going to hear the short blast of a horn. A minute before, it'll blast again. We'll know that we're on target and we'll know we're on time. And that's going to happen pretty soon. We hope you'll stay with us. We have much more coverage of the King Dome's last blast from one of these many angles, you'll see it. And of course, when it's all done, we'll give you many, many replays. So stick around. We've got a couple hours to go.
earth-shattering news, Seattle. At long last, it's here. The legendary story, the heart-grabbing music, the international phenomenon, the Phantom of the Opera, the award-winning musical event that has captured the imagination of theatergoers around the world. Now it's your turn to surrender to the music of the night. Now at the Fifth Avenue Theater through April 29th. Tickets available at the box office or call 292-ARTS. I'm prepared for my son's education. I'm not worried. I've recently diversified. I get my financial advice from a very reliable source. Let's be honest. Smart investing takes valuable insights and a clear plan to help you reach your personal goals. The kind of information you get from Dane Rauscher. What you need to know. It's a grand opening celebration at the new Sandberg Oldsmobile Cadillac of Seattle. This is your chance to save big. This weekend, we've combined the entire inventory of five dealerships to bring you one extraordinary event. Cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs, they're all on sale. Be one of the first 75 people to test drive a car this weekend and receive a free vacation. Don't miss this sale. The grand opening celebration, this weekend only, at Sandberg Oldsmobile Cadillac of Seattle. It could happen to you. Unexpectedly, the power goes out. Plan ahead. Have plenty of flashlights and battery-powered items on hand. Camping gear comes in handy, but candles and other open flames are a fire hazard. And be ready to cook outside to avoid dangerous fumes. Pick up a copy of Keeping Safe When the Lights Go Out at any of Unigard Insurance Group's independent agents or call Como TV at 443-8122 and be prepared for kids' sake. The most traffic reports in the morning. Como for News. And welcome back to our coverage of The Last Blast as we take one of the last looks at the Kingdom on Seattle's skyline and our live camera inside. Hard to believe this building is going to come crumbling down in just a few minutes. We'll have it covered for you from many, many angles here in downtown Seattle. Keith Eldridge is one of our live reporters out there today. He's very close to the Kingdom right now at 2nd and Jackson. Keith? Dan and Kathy, you know, we told you about a secret location. Well, the secret is out. We have several hundred people now who have joined us here in the Second and Jackson. It's got an excellent view of the Kingdom, and people are really in a festive mood. Just a few moments ago, the police came by in their armored vehicle, and much unlike what happened to WTO, the crowd here cheered them, and the police officers in the back were waving, much like they were inside a, a seafair parade float. So there's a very festive atmosphere going on, but there is some concern in this area. As you can tell behind us here, we have the clock tower above the King Street Station. It's a brick structure. And then also, take a look over there. Even though many of the windows are protected, that's Paul Allen's building. Take a look at all that glass. It's unprotected. It's directly facing the uh, Kingdom implosion due to go off any moment now. But we have several hundred people who are here. This is as close as you're going to get. And I'm glad to hear that Steve Poole talked about the dust cloud perhaps going the other direction. If it doesn't, though, we're definitely ready. We've got our breathing apparatus here ready to go. Just in case it comes this way, we hope it doesn't. Reporting live at King Street Station, Keith Eldridge, Como 4 News. Good luck out there with the dust, Keith. And that's just one of the many parties going on in the Seattle area. Right now, we want to check in with John Sharifi. He's up on the 11th floor of the Smith Tower, where there's quite a party underway there, too. John? Kathy, each guest got a commemorative hard hat as they walked into this fundraiser. Here they are, all the guests. They each pay $250 uh, for a very worthy cause for this fundraiser to benefit Providence Mount St. Uh, Vincent Nursing Home in West Seattle. And here's what else they get besides the breakfast. They'll get a spectacular view of the dome. This is really as close as we can get because the restricted zone is just south of us here on Yesler Way and 2nd Avenue. So this uh, really is a front row seat of the dome. And we understand the trio that is performing here will be doing a big drum roll right before. <laughs> Reporting live, uh, John Sharifi, Como 4 News. All right, thanks very much, John. One of the most impressive views of our beautiful city is from West Seattle, looking back at the skyline. That's where Greg England is right now. And he, of course, can see the dome from there. Greg?
Park in West Seattle, and it is a great view. Things are really picking up here. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people filing in, the folks three, four deep along the sidewalk as far as it can go as they get ready to watch this dome come down. And this is what they're waiting to see. They're waiting to see this skyline and how it will change as the dome comes crumbling down. They'll have a great view of the new look of downtown Seattle. And also the folks of West Seattle are well prepared. We've got cameras out here. We've got binoculars and we've had some breakfast. Some folks brought out a grill and cooked up bacon and eggs for some folks out here. So they're well fed and they're also anxious to see this dome as it comes crumbling down. Dan, Kathy, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Greg. We've been smelling pancakes around here, too, as well. I smell some bacon going right now. People are getting up, getting breakfast, and they're uh, hopefully turning on the TV to watch the implosion of the kingdom. You know, the kingdom sits 250 feet high. That roof on that dome right there is 7.85 acres. And in about 20 minutes, it's all going to come crumbling down to the ground, and we'll show it to you from every different perspective that we have, more than a dozen, maybe even two dozen camera angles, including some inside. We'll be right back. Hold your hand even higher and into the fire we go. Bloodshed. Betrayal. Beheading. Lots of laughs. Scarlet Pimpernel. Volvo Broadway at the Paramount presents the Scarlet Pimpernel. Call 202-292-ARTS. I bet you're wondering how the Chrysler Warehouse can guarantee the lowest prices. One big reason is they never buy $20,000 full-page color newspaper ads. Instead, the Chrysler Warehouse created their own newspaper. It's on the internet at ChryslerWarehouse.net. See color photos of every vehicle in stock. So remember, no expensive newspaper ads means big savings to you every day at Enumclaw Chrysler Jeep Dodge, the Chrysler Warehouse. Right now, Fred Meyer is selling postage stamps for less than face value. Wait, is that legal? Just buy a Fred Meyer Stamp Savers book. You get 20 stamps, which cost you $6.60 at the post office, but only $5.94 at Fred Meyer. That's not legal, is it? Plus coupons on famous brands for valuable savings. Does the Postmaster General know about this? Actually, yes. The Stamp Savers book, in cooperation with the U.S. Postal Service, only at Fred Meyer, while supplies last. I belong. 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 I belong too. Boeing Employees Credit Union. Where you belong. Welcome back to our coverage of The Last Blast. Once again, one of our live cameras, more than 20 around the Puget Sound region, train on the Kingdom as an era in Seattle history comes to a close this morning with the implosion of that giant building, which has seen uh, so many memories for many of us who've lived here for many years, and uh, kind of a nostalgic, sentimental day for a lot of people in the Seattle region as we watch the dome, which has been a friend to so many, come down to the ground in a pile of rubble. I think a lot of those memories will flash by in about 10 minutes as we see that building come down, and we apparently are right on schedule, so stick with us now because we expect to see that happen just about 10 minutes from now. We want to go quickly to our reporter, Eric Johnson, who's seen a lot of those sports memories in the uh, kingdom. He's at Jose Rizal Park. Eric? Just standing here thinking, Dan, about the first time I walked in that dome as a kid and saw Reggie Jackson play baseball for the Yankees. Uh, lots and lots of memories. Take a look at some of the tape we have of all the fans and, and people here lined up at this park to watch the demise of the dome. Hundreds and hundreds of people, 10, 20 people deep. A lot of these people spent literally some of the best days of their life in that gray dome watching Seattle sports. The dome was built originally to get big league sports to Seattle. Really, I think we need to remember it served that purpose beautifully. It is because of that dome that we have the Seahawks, that we have the Mariners, and that we have some truly great memories. And now I guess it's getting close to time to saying goodbye, isn't it? It is. 
thanks very much, Eric. We'll uh, keep checking with you as those uh, minutes tick away. Yeah, boy. There's so many memories from that building. I I'll tell you, the baseball, I think, was the most for me in the Yankees. And uh, a lot of cheering, a lot of... Uh, and that was a great thing about that ballpark, too, was the noise that was made Oh, in there. remember and the wave which began in yeah. the kingdom? I mean, that was uh, the beginning of history. And, and today, we see the end. We have, as we've mentioned, live cameras all around the Puget Sound region trained on the dome. We want to show you a couple more of them. One right at 505 Union Station, which, as you know, is just right across the street, where we really expect uh, a lot of that dust cloud to move. We also have a camera that we want to show you at Court in the Square. This gives us just the, the basic view looking at the side of the Kingdom, and we will show this one to you along with many other viewpoints over the next several minutes. Just to give you an idea of how much dust we're talking about, that dome weighs 110,000 tons. The roof alone, eight square acres. And so it's going to take 4,400 pounds of explosives to bring it down. And when it does, standing a, a couple of blocks away, Como's Keith Eldridge down at second and Jackson. Keith? Kathy, you were talking about the wave starting at the Kingdom just a few moments ago. They tried to start the wave here along second and Jackson. Didn't quite go. They're still waiting for the implosion. That's going to be the time when they're really going to start the wave around here. But they tried it. Take a look. We are as close as you're going to get. The Kingdom is just a couple of blocks away. They're talking about the blast and then the possible dust cloud, and we're not exactly sure if we're going to get covered with dust here. But it could be we'll be right in the blast zone, so we're pretty close. This is as close as you're going to get. This is as close as they've allowed us, and the police are really being cheered every time they go by. It's quite a different scene than WTO. They're kindler, gentler. WTO uh, police off officer and police force right now. People here, very festive mood, really enjoying it, just waiting for this to go off. Can't wait for it to happen. Reporting live at King Street Station, Keith Eldridge, Como 4 News. Keith, thank you very much. You know, some might say the wave started at Husky Stadium, right. but how many times have you seen it dominate the crowd in the, in the Kingdom as it worked its way from right. the outfield back behind home plate and all the way around? And very impressive. intimidate the opponents That's in a big right. way. Hey, a lot going on in the sky up above us. We counted... Uh, Oh, more than 20 aircraft in just the last couple of minutes, several helicopters circling, and then around that perimeter, a number of uh, fixed-wing aircraft as well, all now going in formation to watch, and uh, Air 4 is up there among them. We want to thank Roger Fox for flying up in that crowd, and Kevin Reese, who's up in the helicopter too. Kevin? Uh, I would like to thank him more than anyone else, quite frankly, and uh, uh, we are looking at some very busy traffic up here. Roger's watching that, and uh, meanwhile, myself and uh, photographer John Larsgaard are keeping an eye on our view of the dome from up here. We told you before about the massive armada of boats that are gathering in Elliott Bay, and of course the, the armada of aircraft, I guess, that are up here as well. Uh, however, in terms of cars, that traffic is now stopped on all major freeways in and around the dome. Uh, the viaduct is now closed. You can see that uh, uh, the last few cars are making their way north, but that is it. Uh, I-90 was uh, stopped a long time ago, and if we can pan a little bit to the right, you can see the I-90, I-5 interchange and see that that has now been completely stopped as well. It is empty, and uh, the only uh, people that you will see are the people that are a little further to the right up there on the side of Beacon Hill and still up on the, the 12th Avenue Bridge and up where uh, Dan and Kathy are right now. Uh, in terms of uh, that activity, it looks like we are ready to go with uh, the implosion. Everything has been cleared out of the way of the, uh, of the Kingdom and uh, we will have this vantage point for you as we move back to the Kingdom. We're gonna uh, try a little bit wider shot, I believe, so that you can see uh, the full effect of the Kingdom disappearing once and for all from the Seattle skyline. We'll see you in a few minutes. Dan and Kathy. Kevin Reese, thank you. We are closing in on the five minute mark now until the Kingdom will implode. Again, a reminder that at about two minutes, we'll hear the blast of a horn, another blast at uh, one minute. And the project supervisor has said he wants to do this as close to 8.30 as possible. He promised for everybody's planning purpose that it wouldn't happen a second before 8.30, but it might happen right at that time. Right now, as we look down on the Kingdom and right inside Safeco Field, we want to take you live right over there and Como Steve Poole, who also has a, a pretty good view of the Kingdom in its very last minutes in existence. Steve? Thanks very much, Kathy. As we get ever closer, I was just going through my personal checklist on things that I need to sort of uh, stay safe and stay protected as all this happens. I've got my, my earplugs ready to go. I've got a uh, 
a dust mask because as you can see we are awfully close to this and of course some some goggles all in place and I'm hoping I won't need to use too much of this stuff but we're ready just in case and I'll get back out of the way now as we take one last look here zooming in and just getting a feel for all that's in place as this historic event is now mere moments away obviously this is something that has been talked about and waited for for a long time and uh, it is now very very close to actually occurring the weather just absolutely fabulous and we have uh, frankly my friends kind of lucked out on this one because there's a weather system right on the coast uh, we flirted with fog this morning but you really could not have a better view and uh, better weather for this historic event the last moments of the kingdom Dan and Kathy, back to you. Steve, thank you. As we get so close now, let's just tell you what's going to happen here over the next couple of minutes. As we've mentioned, we'll hear the blast at two minutes and then another blast at one minute. Then there's going to be a countdown from 10 till about six seconds. And you know what happens then is the man who's giving the countdown, the project supervisor, has to get away from the countdown so he can just check to make sure as he's listening to people who are contacting him to make sure that everything is okay as they close right in on the final detonation point. Now let me tell you what you're going to see when the actual detonation happens because as we've mentioned several times we have four cameras right inside the dome. Now these are disposable cameras. We do not expect them to survive but the cable from those cameras runs inside a PVC pipe that is expected to survive at least the beginning of the implosion. The signal from those cameras will be sent to a satellite truck which will then be beaming the pictures to us and, and to you. Now so what you'll see when, when the very first implosion happens is a couple of seconds from inside one of those four cameras. We have one pointed straight up at the dome. We have them in several areas around the dome. And then we'll be taking you outside for a vantage point so you can really get a good look at what happens uh, from, from a, a wider shot. Right. We got, want to give you that wide shot outside and we'll stay on that one camera for the implosion as it happens after we give you the brief look inside. And then we have so many other cameras that we will be able to show you on videotape because we are in fact going to be on the air for about an hour and a half after the implosion. So we will be showing you uh, many, many replays, probably till you get to the point where you might be a little tired of it, but we want to make sure we give you every camera angle possible and uh, to make sure that you get some time to uh, look at it and if we can say enjoy it. It is history in the making here in Seattle as uh, the King Dome, 24 years old, uh, comes crumbling to the ground as we have mentioned. It will not be flattened. Uh, the people that are running the implosion, have all, their job is to basically get the, the uh, dome down. Some of the outside walls will remain standing and then the bulldozer crews will move in and knock those down. And what we hear now is the two-way radio transmission from the actual implosion site, which will give the final go ahead the final button to be pushed and that's the uh, audio that you're hearing as we count down in the final minute here so you will definitely be able to hear that countdown as it closes in uh, it sounds I'd almost uh, we might want to just listen I, I have not heard the siren for the two-minute warning yet however that's uh, possible we would miss it with these headsets on uh, we are showing just one minute before 830 so we will hear the 10 9 8 7 6 countdown so we'll know exactly when it's going to happen so stick with us here it's about to happen the kingdom which has had 73 million people cross through its turnstiles is about to become history it's about to become rubble a lot of people didn't want it built in the first place as we look at some of the camera vantage points that we'll be showing you we are told that the camera the uh, uh, sirens have not sounded. Uh, there's one. That could be the first one. We'll wait and see, but we are getting very close, and we're showing you just some of the angles that we have with the cameras, dozens of them focused in on that grand building right now. And as you look out over Elliott Bay, the thousands of boats that have gathered, people uh, gathered on hilltops, on bridges, as we hear the final uh, the final crew call go for the implosion. Let's uh, listen in as uh, they get ready for the last blast of the kingdom. We'll now uh, sit and watch as it happens. Jason, are you clear? Clear. Kevin, are you clear? Clear. Jamie, are you clear? Clear. Bill, are you clear? Clear. Okay, yes, are you clear? Clear. Yeah. Stacy, are you clear? Clear. Mark, are you clear? Clear. This is your one minute siren, CDI. This is your one minute siren.
Now just less than one minute away, as you heard, the crews making the final safety checks, making sure everyone is clear. There are 5,500 holes drilled in that building right now. Most of them are filled with explosives. We will see a ring of lightning effect go around the top of the Kingdome. We, of course, will pause and let you watch and enjoy as it happens, but we're taking you up now to the final 30 seconds as the Kingdom and people around the world are literally watching this live right now, a dramatic event in Seattle's history. Seattle says goodbye to the Kingdom, and so do we. Here we go, CDI, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Right now what we're watching is a tremendous cloud of dust and debris move up through the downtown Seattle area. As the King Dome comes down, we hear the demolition experts saying, beautiful right now, a cloud of debris continues to move up through the downtown Seattle area past Union Station. We could feel, we could literally feel the earth move when the uh, kingdom blew. Uh, we are uh, probably a mile away with a perfect vantage point, but it did rattle the ground. Of course, we did know that they were planning seismic experiments to find out exactly what they could learn as the earth shook, and it indeed did. They said it would probably be about one. Uh, a register one on the old Richter scale, which they don't use anymore, but uh, we could definitely feel the magnitude of that blast. And now we begin to understand why those seismographs that have been placed all around the Seattle area in many locations uh, will prove to be so critical in figuring out what will happen to a uh, Seattle during an earthquake because the earth did move, the buildings shook, uh, we're looking right now at a live picture uh, on that area of 2nd and Jackson, and uh, you can see a lot of folks getting the brunt of that dust cloud right now because it was a tremendous force that just blasted that dust, which is moving in a northerly direction right now. Uh, a lot of folks <laughs> may be being coated with dust who didn't anticipate it because they thought that the dust might be going in a different direction. But as we sit up from our vantage point, just look at that cloud of dust and debris. 100,000 tons of kingdom just came down in a flash and now you're watching the aftermath as we wait for some of that dust to settle to see what's left of the kingdom. Right now all you see is uh, a lot of folks throughout the downtown area headed north are getting coated right now with dust as it continues to move north and sort of in an easterly, northeasterly direction. The dust actually obscured the view of the kingdom coming down. You could see about 10 seconds. You could see, of course, the uh, detonation on the roof. You could see the building begin to collapse, and then that dust, the pressure of the air uh, that came from the outside, uh, from inside out of the kingdom to just spread this dust all over the city. And it is true, one of the things that we are anticipating now is to see what it will look like when the dust clears to see how much of that building is still standing. And as we have told you, they said maybe we would see 60 to 70 feet high of debris, maybe some of the walls, although I saw walls collapse. There's no doubt about that as the blast went off, the last blast at the kingdom. Well, not only will we see what's left of the kingdom, but also uh, any damage that may have been done. And I'm, I'm not certain, but that uh, crane down there in the left-hand portion of your screen uh, looked to have moved some during the actual implosion. I'm not sure if it... Uh, uh, fell down a little bit, but again, one of the reasons that we're